Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I want to talk about the Holy Spirit of God. And I want to talk about the fact that as Christians, each one of us has the Holy Spirit. It's impossible to call on the name of Jesus without the Holy Spirit. And yet, the Bible encourages us to continue to seek the Holy Spirit, to continually be filled with the Holy Spirit. And if we look at Peter's declaration when at Pentecost, when he was talking to people who did not know Christ, we see that the Holy Spirit was a gift which all people, not just the ones that were there at the time, but he said their children and all generations in all times, anybody who God the Father calls will receive the Holy Spirit. But some of us often feel like we don't even know what this is, receiving the Holy Spirit. Some people have called the Holy Spirit the quiet member of the Trinity, the one who works behind the scenes. Other people are quick to jump up in front of everybody and say, the Holy Spirit is the only thing that matters. We need to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit and we need to be slain in the Spirit. But we're going to look at Scripture today and we're going to hear God's testimony about His Holy Spirit and how we as Christians... We continually are filled with the Holy Spirit. We are empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we can remain faithful to Christ and that we can serve other people. If you look at what happened in that account in Acts, I guess there are three things. The first one is the word of God was preached. And not just any word of God, but it was the word of God that declared Jesus, that declared who Jesus was, Lord and Messiah, declared what he did and what it meant. And I think this is really important. Whenever we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, it is never separated, never separated from the preaching of Christ. Secondly, there was an admonishment, repent. And then thirdly, after the word was preached and there was a a command, if you like, to repent. After those things, we see that the Holy Spirit is given. And so we're going to look at those things. Now, the Holy Spirit is a good thing. The Holy Spirit is something that we desire as Christians. Of course we know about the Father and His creative force. Of course we know about His will. And we know about Jesus, how he came to earth so that we could be intimately connected with God and the work that he did on the cross so that we could be saved. But Jesus himself said that he would send the Comforter, he would send the Holy Spirit to be with us. So it's good for us to hunger for the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus promised to us. This is what Jesus said would sustain us. In fact, we know that the Holy Spirit generates faith. The Holy Spirit changes our hearts so that we start to display the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit empowers us for service. The Holy Spirit changes us. And certainly, the Holy Spirit gives us His gifts so that we can serve the body. And Paul was quite clear about this. He talked about the gifts of the Holy Spirit in the context of the whole body. That the gifts were meant for service. The gifts were not meant to bring attention to us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit were not meant to put on a show. The gifts of the Holy Spirit were meant to serve the body. And if we keep that in mind, we can't go far wrong, really. If we look at what happened when Peter was preaching? The word came first, then repentance, then the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't want to make this prescriptive, but I do believe that these things go together. We know for sure 
that the Holy Spirit cannot be pulled apart from the Word of God. The Holy Spirit is not some force like the genie in the lamp where you can rub the genie and say some magic incantation to conjure up the Holy Spirit so he could do some spiritual and supernatural work. That's paganism. That's crazy stuff. The Holy Spirit is part of the Holy Trinity. You can't separate the Holy Spirit from God the Son or God the Father. They are just a package that comes together. And so it is absolutely natural that when Jesus Christ is preached, the Holy Spirit is there. It is inevitable. They are indivisible. You can't separate them. And so if we are hungering for the Holy Spirit, the question is, are we hungering for the Word of God? See, sometimes we can be so anxious to receive the Holy Spirit that we forget that the Word and the Spirit are joined together, glued together, nailed together, screwed together. Can't have one without the other. In fact, if there is some demonstration of the Spirit's action without the Word of God, then you have to wonder where this Spirit came from. Is it really the Spirit of God? Because certainly, as Peter said in his preaching, that Jesus Christ did many signs and wonders, and he said that his disciples would do the same thing. But they would do them in his name. They would do them for his glory. And all of these things would be done so that people could have faith in Jesus. You see, the Holy Spirit points people to Jesus, points people to the cross, points people to a resurrection life. So when we say we are hungry for the Holy Spirit to be in our lives, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, what we are really saying is that we are hungering to get into the Word of God. You see... Jesus was the living word. And the more we know Jesus, the closer we are to Jesus, the more the Holy Spirit is released in our life. So in some sense, it is inevitable. But in another sense, we also have to do our part. We have to be open. We have to have a heart that's willing to change. We have to want the word of God to be formative in our life. If you look at King David, a man who's described by um, God as a man after his own heart. He knew the law. Nobody had to explain to him the Ten Commandments. He was well aware. And yet we see in the Psalms, David says, Teach me your way, O Lord. David wants the word of God to resonate in his soul, for it to take root in his heart. He wants to be led by the Holy Spirit. He wants to be closer to the word of God so that it's not just something that's academic or something that's passing, but the word of God is the soil in which he grows. The word of God is his breath, his spiritual breath, that he takes every single day. And for us too, the more we're immersed in the word, the more naturally the outworkings of the Holy Spirit are seen in our lives. And if we look at the next part that happens, Peter says, repent. If we want to be close to Jesus, if we want to be his disciples, repentance is part of a mature Christian life. And yet, so many of us as Christians find this a hard thing to do. We talk, oh, no one's perfect, I'm not perfect. But when it comes down to the nitty gritty and saying, how are you not perfect? How am I not perfect? Where do we need to repent? That's a harder question to answer. And it's an uncomfortable question. None of us enjoy self-examination and seeing where we need to ask the Holy Spirit to be at work helping us with a failure, 
helping us to overcome a struggle we have in our life. We are called to repent and to repent daily. How many of us really, when we think about it, take some time each day to confess to the Lord, I have sinned. There is things that I've done, there are things in my life that need your attention, Lord, and I'm handing them over to you. How many of us do that? You see, it's that openness of heart to be formed by the word, to admit our failings, and therefore to grow spiritually as a Christian. These are the things that lead to a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In fact, it's very difficult for us to have the gifts of the Holy Spirit, to increase the, increase the depths of our faith, to demonstrate the fruit of the Spirit if we are hard-hearted and we are reluctant to confess our sins. We are reluctant to repent. In my experience as a pastor, I can say the greatest breakthroughs spiritually for me and for all of those to whom I minister, these greatest breakthroughs happen when we are honest with God, when we show Him our heart. And sometimes it's black, sometimes it's sooty, sometimes it's grey, sometimes it's dark. And we say, Lord, I have sinned. Lord, my heart is dirty. Lord, I'm admitting to you, I'm confessing to you. I'm repenting of these things. This is how we grow as a Christian. And we have to remember that God is not trying to crush us. Quite the reverse. As we have a repentant heart, He is lifting us up and He is pouring into us His Holy Spirit so that we are more fruitful so that we are more faithful, so that we are more effective in the kingdom. He doesn't want to break us, he wants to make us. And the way he does that is by us having a repentant and open heart. This is the way God does his work. And as a mature Christian, we shouldn't shy away from this. In fact, it should be a time of self-discovery. For us to say, wow, Lord, look what I'm finding out about myself. As I confess my sins, I find that there's a pattern emerging. I can see that things have happened in my life that are affecting my behaviors, that are putting a barrier between your will and what I'm doing. Or it might just be a stubbornness of heart where there is a persistent sin where we say, Lord, I know that my heart is stubborn here and I won't give this up and I need your help. And we discover in our own being, in our own soul, things that need attention. And then we're freed from those. You see, we do not want to be held in bondage by anything in our life. Whether it's a persistent sin, whether it's something that's happened to us in the past that's having continuing effects. The freedom that we have in Christ comes from us being open. We can't hide anything from God anyway. He already knows it. What we're doing when we repent is we're being honest with ourselves. And we're allowing the Spirit of God to come and do His work. His work to make us. To empower us. And so when we hear the wonderful word of God, and we say, I'm happy for that word to be formative in my life. And I am willing to repent, and I'm willing to be open, and I'm willing to have the Holy Spirit of God shine His light into my life. And I will turn and repent of the things that are revealed to me, and I will grow as a disciple. Then... We are in relationship with the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is not a force, but he's a person. I can't have the Holy Spirit. I'm in relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's just like my marriage. 
I don't have my wife and she doesn't have me, then we are not each other's possession. We are in relationship with each other. And we honour each other. And we respect one another. We love each other. And so we honour and we love God's Holy Spirit. We celebrate His presence in our life. And we, we are happy to be led by Him. And what we find is as we step out in our Christian journey, as we take a risk, you see, the Holy Spirit helps us to take that next step, to take the risks. Yeah, we hear the Word and we repent and we're growing and then we need to step out and take a risk. Remember, over this time we've been talking about being new people, resurrection people, not resuscitated people, but new people. And as a new creation, we step out, empowered by the Holy Spirit. We have a confidence that any work that needs to be done in our life is being done because we're honest. We believe in the power of God's word because it's been seen in our life. We are living testimony to what happens. And so we step out. Then people notice that we're different. They say, that person has changed. Look, I can see the Spirit of God in how they're acting, in their relationships, in what they're saying, in what they're doing. That person is different. And it's interesting because the Holy Spirit of God, just like the Word of God, is divisive. Some people are attracted immediately to it and other people are repelled. And so we find people that sometimes they'll be taking a step back from us because, whoa, what's going on? That person's different. Yeah, because the power of God, the Spirit of God is strong. And the other people in your life go, wow, I have to be here near you. I need to hear what you've got to say. I want you to minister to me because we're stepping out. We're being led by the promptings of the Holy Spirit. And then suddenly the Holy Spirit says, here is my gifts. Go and use them for my kingdom. And we're excited about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We believe that God has released the gifts of the Holy Spirit for his church to serve one another and to serve the world. And my goodness, doesn't the world need a touch of the Holy Spirit? Doesn't the world need healing? Doesn't the world need a prophetic word? Doesn't the world need service, mercy, faith? These things that the Holy Spirit pours into us so that we can serve. And we don't serve our agenda. We don't serve anybody else's agenda. We simply point to Christ. That's it in a nutshell. The only reason that we are anxious to serve, to be used by God's Holy Spirit, to be in relationship with Him, is so that we can point to Christ. So that other people indeed can have a life-saving faith. Other people can enjoy the benefits that we enjoy, where we walk daily in Christ. Where we are not afraid of what the world can do to us because we are His. Where we can confidently say, I am being changed and I'm being changed for the better. And I'm embracing that. You see, when we have received the Holy Spirit, we will be changed. And that's a bit of a mindset, particularly for some of us who can be a bit stubborn, who don't want to change. We like the stability of the routine of who we are and what we do. And yet... When we are in relationship with the Holy Spirit, we will change. Absolutely, we will change. It's like when I see two people who come into a serious relationship. Perhaps they become married. And they affect one another. It's inevitable that they affect one another. The Lord says the two become one. Each one affects the others so that there's a common way. This too happens 
when we are in relationship with the Holy Spirit. We change. And it's a natural and beautiful thing as we change so that we can walk a common way. The way of God. So we receive the Holy Spirit in a very straightforward and simple way. We hunger for the Word. We put ourselves in the Word. We repent and we are honest with ourselves. And we ask God for His Holy Spirit so that we can serve one another. So that we can serve the world. And we step out confident that when we know the Word of God, when we have absolutely been honest and we are open to God's leading and God's correction, that He will be in our life powerfully, making us, remaking us, renewing us, so that His action can be, can be seen and that we can point others to Christ. May we pray. Lord, we thank you that we have the gift of the Holy Spirit as our right, as your disciples. And so we pray today, Lord, that you would give us a hunger for your word, that you would give us a heart that's open to be corrected, that we would see the need for repentance in our life, and that we would be excited that we would be empowered by your spirit to step out and to serve. In your holy name we pray. Amen.